down here. Fantastic, welcome. I really hope you enjoy it. Guys, for those of you that are new, The Hive is a non-profit organisation. We have monthly events just like this one. Uh, we operate in Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne. And we're all about building an entrepreneurial community in those cities. So unlike other business networking events, we're actually about getting people together, finding like-minded people and making some friends. There's no cost, there's no selling here. We discourage people from trying to sell each other at this event. We're here to get to know each other and see if we can get some some more value out of that rather than just pitching our, our products or services. So on that note that we are a non-profit, uh, we are supported by a couple of sponsors that do keep us alive. One of those is this venue, Greystone Bar. They've kindly brought out a couple of those nibble platters that you're probably enjoying at the moment. Uh, Cloakley Estate Wines that sponsor our gifts. We've also got um, a special monthly sponsor tonight, iLab Incubator, which I'll tell you about after the event. Um, and we've also got a couple of national sponsors which sponsor all three cities. They're Deloitte Digital and RMIT University. <laughs> So enough of the boring stuff, I'll get on to what we're all here for tonight. Uh, we're here to see Guy Blomberg, or Yug as he's affectionately known. Uh, Guy is one of the founders of Mana Bar, the first ever cocktail gaming bar in the world apparently, which is fantastic. Uh, he's got a long history in, in graphic design, uh, founder and creator of um, Game World. Uh, Australian Gamer. AustralianGamer.com, thank you, I don't have my notes. Uh, and a couple of other websites. So look, I won't tell his story, I'll let him tell you and share some of his stories and entrepreneurial passion along the way. So please welcome Yug. Uh, cool. Cheers, Mike. Um, yeah, just to preface this, um, I run a bar called The Manor Bar in Fortitude Valley. It's a video game bar where you can play Xbox and Nintendo and Playstations and drink cocktails and, and very nice classy uh, drinks and things like that. Has anyone been there, by the way? Has anyone, a show of hands, been to the Manor Bar? Excellent, you can all go there afterwards. Um, but look, I'll, 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 I guess the main reason I'm actually here is because the Manor Bar is uh, successful. It's doing really well, and no one really expected it to, which is really exciting and very cool. Uh, but I'll get to that in a second. I, I guess I'm going to take this back and tell you a little bit of a story about myself and how I actually came to the point, the point of uh, creating and opening up this manor bar because it's this nice little uh, story uh, going from uh, not having anything and not really uh, getting very far with things to actually uh, where I am today. And it all starts, uh, just to get your attention, uh, in porn. Uh, <laughs> I used to work in the adult industry when I was 18. I was young, I needed the money. Sorry, uh, when I say porn, I don't mean porn. I mean, uh, I actually used to design adult websites. So I actually used to work for a company that actually made uh, and designed websites. Uh, point of fact, actually, back in 2000, uh, as far as I know, uh, I was told that about a quarter of the world's porn sites were actually operated by companies based here in Brisbane, Australia. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, but there was, there, was a, there was a massive, massive industry for it right here in Brisbane. And I got into that industry, uh, and uh, I, I came straight out of high school. I, was, I actually had good enough grades to go to university. I was determined to do something interesting and, and great with my life. I really loved computers and design and all this kind of stuff, and the only job I could manage to actually get was in the adult industry. Uh, but I did take to that very well. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting uh, working in a company where, you know, if, if you don't have dodgy images on your screen, you're actually, you know, told to get those naked women back on your computer screen. Um, so that was, that, that was entertaining. But I learned a lot of very important lessons actually working in the adult industry. Uh, the first thing uh, was uh, there was this attitude of things just uh, had to get done as soon as possible. I mean, there's always a certain level of pers perfection in the design industry and in anything that anyone does. But I learned very early on that uh, if something, if you, you have an idea or you actually want to make it happen, it needs to get done as soon as possible. It might be 90% done at the end of it, but if you wait another six months for it to get perfect, someone else might actually have that idea and put it out before you. And because the adult industry was very much on the cutting edge of technology, I'm not going to compete with this, this, these people.
Seriously, if they come around again, I give up. <laughs> they, cool. okay. um, so where was I? Porn, yes. Um, so I learned a lot of really interesting uh, lessons in the other industry, especially like having to actually get things done uh, very, very quickly. Uh, it's, it's something in the graphic design industry. Sorry, I should, I'm, I'm going to ramble off on completely different tangents as I talk, by the way. Uh, the graphic design industry, because I designed the websites and things like that, uh, you tend to have a particular attitude where you want to actually be a perfectionist. You want everything to be absolutely perfect, 100% uh, ready before you actually put it out into the marketplace or give it to your clients or whatever. And in the adult industry, we learned kind of the opposite. We learned that you've got a week to do this and it has to get done no matter what. It's not perfect by the end of it, tough. You've got to move on to the next thing. Because the adult industry was very much about cutting edge technology. The reason I got the job in this particular company was because my resume was done in Flash, which at that particular time, uh, no one really used. And that's, that's pretty much the only reason they hired me, because I used a technology that they were really interested in. Um, so I worked in the adult industry for about four or five years, uh, which was uh, very, very fun. I eventually left uh, because it got a little bit too crazy, all the characters and the people, and it was something out of a crazy uh, movie scenario. Please hit me up after this, I'll tell you some fantastic stories. <laughs> um, uh, from there I went, oh sorry, while I was actually working that old industry, one of the things that uh, is, is pushed and used to be very creative and inventive uh, in ways to actually get consumers to actually give you their credit card. Uh, but from that, you know, you, you're just constantly spending time uh, thinking of different ways to actually utilize technology. And the first website that I actually did outside of the adult industry was a website called rizchat.com. And this was me actually just playing around with another idea. And I thought, you know, I used to chat on like your MSN chat rooms and things like that. Uh, and they closed down. I thought, hey, here's this great opportunity. Uh, you know, there's all these people that used to use this, this chat technology. And uh, there were all these people I used to chat with in Brisbane. And now they had nowhere to really go. So I opened up a website called Briz Chat. And I actually developed it on the side, uh, you know, outside of working hours, which kind of came, became the mantra for the rest of my life, uh, creating this, this, this little chat website, which eventually, uh, you know, through no particular marketing or promotion or just putting it up and telling all these people that used to chat in this chat room, I eventually got about 30,000 people that were actually chatting in the Brisbane area within the period of about two years. Uh, I learned a very other, another very important lesson at that particular point in time, which is if you have a great idea and a fantastic website, it's exceptionally difficult to actually make any money out of it. Um, so I sold that website for about $200 in a carton of beer. Uh, at that particular time, I was, I was 21 years old. Uh, to a friend of mine who eventually shut it down. But that was my first foray into actually doing something on the side uh, based on the, you know, with the skills and the experience that I'd actually built uh, from working as a designer in the adult industry. Eventually I left the adult industry and started working uh, for other more reputable design firms. I worked for a company called 24-7 making websites for nightclubs and restaurants and bars and pubs all around Brisbane and Sydney and Melbourne, which was great fun. It really actually made me feel respectable. Um, but the whole working on things on the side and actually doing a 9 to 5 job and actually coming home at the end of the day and not really having anything else to be creative with, that whole bridge chat thing kind of kept me looking for other things and other opportunities and other things to do. So I started up a game, a website called Australian Gamer with a friend of mine. This was all based on the fact that I used to play a lot of video games, uh, as many people of my age did and do. Um, so. I actually uh, hit up a friend of mine who was actually a programmer, a very skilled programmer, I being a graphic designer. We were very frustrated about the lack of uh, games that be were being released in Australia on time. Uh, you'd get, funny enough, there was one game that we were particularly keen on called Dance Dance Revolution. <laughs> a dance and don't.